Chris Mason. I'm the owner of At Large Nutrition. Uh, I want to take a minute here. I was just on, uh, actually on the CrossFit forums. I frequent various uh, online forums quite a bit, uh, including my own, the wannabebig.com. Anyway, uh, there was a question on there by a fellow and asking if he should continue taking a certain brand of protein or replace it with creatine or add the creatine to it. And the implication in the question was whether or not creatine can have a greater direct effect in his training than a protein supplement. And I've actually done a video to this effect previously, but this compelled me to do it again. I'm going to try and do this in a fairly succinct fashion. Uh, protein is not an ergogen. Protein is a macronutrient. Protein occurs, of course, in foods of, of all types. Um, you can get, there are various qualities of protein in the sense that that plant-derived proteins may be quote-unquote incomplete proteins, meaning that they're not completely lacking, but relatively lacking in uh, one uh, amino acid or another. Uh, the complete proteins, of course, being the sources everybody knows of, meats, uh, dairy products, etc. Um, here's the, just kind of overall sense. Consuming a protein supplement, assuming the supplement is just protein, uh, it is is in the grand scheme no different than eating a piece of chicken or drinking some milk. Uh, of course, the milk has the additional, you know, the, the lactose, the milk sugar, and you have, may have some fat depending on what kind of milk it is, etc. But the point being, the, the constituent amino acids, what you're going to get out of it, are essentially the same thing. Consuming a protein powder, contrary to all the advertising you'll ever see, basically, all the BS that's out there, and all the misinformation from all the internet gurus that's out there, is not going to make you big and strong. In the Western world, which is what the majority of the people are going to be viewing this video uh, are a member of, uh, in the Western world, even in, let's just say the developed world, we won't even say Western world, uh, let's just say developed world, it's, it's, you're going to be hard pressed to be deficient in protein in your diet. So supplementing with additional protein is really going to do nothing for you. Um, there's really only a very few occasions when supplementing with protein makes sense. Now, you can do it regularly, and of course, you know, uh, I sell protein, so I'm probably not helping myself with this video, but anyway. Uh, certainly, protein is a, a supplement of convenience. After you train, after an intense training session, it's, you know, pretty much, it, it, we'll call it a generally agreed upon fact that, that consuming some nutrients directly after training, specifically protein and carbohydrates, is a benefit to your recovery. And so a lot of people will drink a protein shake. And that is nothing wrong with that. That is actually perfect because it's convenient. You can certainly eat a meal and derive the same benefit, or food of some sort, and derive the same benefit, assuming it's a high quality protein. But certainly drinking the shake, you know, mixing it up, drinking it right afterwards is a much simpler way to go about it. In fact, what I recommend to people. Uh, is that they do that, is that they consume a protein shake right after they train and then try to get a meal in within about an hour or so of that. Uh, and I will recommend in, in most cases, except for there's rare occasions where someone's trying to, if someone's on a very low carb diet, a really deep into a fat loss type uh, situation where I would just do protein. But in the vast majority of scenarios, if you want to uh, uh, optimize your recovery ability or the, you know your recovery from the training, you, you definitively want carbs with the protein. It works synergistically. I'm not going to get into that whole thing, but it's trust me, that's the way to go. Um, so, convenient factor. Uh, if you have some sort of medical condition, uh, you know, or not even condition, but say like a great like bariatric, like people that have had their stomachs removed, you know, a portion of their stomach removed, obese people trying to lose weight, they get they're so restricted in calories that they need an extremely Low, or the lowest calorie possible source of high quality protein and a protein supplement fits that because it's essentially all it is. There may be a little bit of fat, a little bit of uh, lactose, etc. but the, basically it's just protein. So you're getting the protein without anything else. So in that situation, in certain medical conditions, it's certainly warranted. Your doctor would tell you if that's the case. Um, if for some, say you're a vegan and, and for whatever reason you just have a heck of a time getting in the requisite amount of protein, that might be, again, a, a time to consider a protein supplement um, or a vegetarian. Um, vegans are going to be somewhat limited on what supplements you can take too. So, But 
point taken, I hope. Um, so what else? There's one other situation which is uh, which is uh, escaping me at the moment. But anyway, the convenience is the number one factor. Just taking protein isn't going to turn you into some big strong guy. Okay. Now, flip that around. Ergogens. There are ergogens out there, supplements. And ergogen is something that essentially will directly affect your training, directly benefit your training. Creatine is certainly one of those. So in this case of this question this fellow asked, creatine versus protein, creatine wins hands down every day of the week. If you could afford one supplement, I would make it creatine. Uh, if you could afford a combination, uh, I sell a product called Results, which is creatine, beta alanine, HMB, and dextrose. It's a really, really potent combination. Um, or you could just take individually uh, uh, creatine and beta alanine. Those are probably my top two choices for you know, ergogens that will actually make a difference to your training. Um, those products, creatine and beta alanine specifically, for most users will make a significant difference. Both will add some lean muscle mass, creatine typically three to six pounds in most individuals. Uh, both can increase absolute strength, although creatine is much is, is essentially uh, biased towards the absolute strength side of the spectrum, where beta alanine uh, is going to be a little bit more on the um, strength endurance uh, and or uh, total volume end of the equation, permitting more of that. Um, so, if you have to make a choice, if your funds are limited, stick with the ergogen. Protein is wonderful. It's a convenient a convenience factor. Uh, please buy mine if you're going to buy. But uh, but I hope that I've just hopefully clear it up a little bit, these misconceptions that are perpetuated uh, on the net and elsewhere, uh, in the gyms and everywhere else. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly you can contact us through our contact email. I answer quite a few of those. Um, you can get me direct. Uh, if you go to our website, www.atlargenutrition.com, you'll see a contact us email. Certainly send questions my way. Our Facebook page, I check that pretty much daily. So. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thanks for listening.